Hello everyone, MTAs here from JobReadyProgrammer.com. I want to talk to you about code fear. Yes, fear of code. What is it? Does it even exist? Where does it come from? There is actually a thing called code fear. It's not a very popular term. Um, if you Google it, you might not find much except for maybe a course that I created in the past. That was actually one of my first courses that I ever created. But code fear, what is it? I'll tell you a little bit about when I first joined software development. This was almost over 15 years ago when I first got into the industry and my first job as a software developer. When I came in the first day, I, didn't, I obviously knew how to code a little bit. I wasn't an expert by any means. I was just a rookie. But everyone around me obviously had been there longer than I had. And they were uh, a couple of years older. Uh, some were much older. But I thought that everyone around me knew so, so much more about everything. <laughs> I thought that, you know, things that even don't have to do with their job role, I figured out oh, this guy works in this company, he should know what happens in that department and that department or, you know, what that application that that team is working on knows, you know, I, I thought that they would know everything. Not only that, I also thought that this application that we've developed, they know every single piece of this application, they know the databases, they know about the uh, the, of course, how everything is uh, connected, um, this web services and, you know, data model and everything. Whereas in reality, it wasn't like that. It was a pretty large application. And so I personally had a very high standard for myself. And I figured that to keep up with these guys, I have to learn everything about this application. So I sat down, opened the code base and started <laughs> reading line by line. Okay. It turned out that after uh, a couple of days, this was still my training period. No one had uh, walked me through the code or anything at this point. I was still sort of setting up my workspace, but I had access to the code through a different machine. So I was going through the code uh, for that application that that department was working on. And after about a week of just reading all the code, I couldn't understand anything. Whereas I thought that as a software developer at that time, I thought that as a software developer, that first, uh, you know, joins a company or really is supposed to be able to read the code and understand as if it's a book. And so obviously I felt, I felt okay, you know, this is my first real uh, job. It's going to be challenging. So I'm not able to understand all this code. I don't know what's going on. I didn't even know how to approach how to break the application down and, and try to understand what this module does, what this module does. I didn't even have the approach for how to study an application that that uh, that is new to me. So I went ahead and tried to reach out to a colleague and you know ask them, "Hey, do you know what what's going on here?" and they would look at it and they would be like, "Hmm. Yeah, I'll get back to you on that." So I asked somebody else, uh, same answer. <laughs> As a matter of fact, very few people actually knew what was going on in the application and the code, which was shocking to me. I thought Hey, these guys are developers. They should know everything. It turns out that those guys were uh, responsible for certain modules and not responsible for others. And since I didn't have any perspective or experience, I thought that they should know what this, you know, there, there was th thousands of classes in that code base. So there was no way everybody would know everything. And in a large team that develops software, not everyone knows everything. That's just a given. I didn't understand it at the time. When I started looking at the code and uh, I was assigned a, a project within a couple of weeks and by then I kind of uh, had a clue as to how to run this application on my local machine. Even after a month, I was still struggling. What really happened in that first job of mine is I didn't have the proper guidance uh, or, or the mentorship required or, or really just the education. Uh, that team members should provide to newcomers in, a, in an organization to get them up to speed. Everyone was busy in, in uh, a certain release that was coming up. That was a big release. So they put my training on sort of on the back burner. So I was left on my own for, uh, for quite a while to figure out what was going on. And I didn't make much progress in a month. Um, I knew how to read the code. I knew how to, but I thought that I'm supposed to literally just understand it. I was not. So I started to fear it. I started to get afraid that, oh my God, I'm not cut out for this job. That's not how it works. Okay. When you get hired into an organization, you're hired because you're capable of doing that job, whatever it is. And so, uh, 
I had this imposter syndrome that took over me and I realized, oh my God, this is not where I need to be. Oh no. And I'm sure any any newcomer um, in this field may have gone through that stage in their career at some point. Um, and uh, it's a very natural phase. Code fear does exist. And uh, it really just requires time, right? No one a lot of the perspective that I have now after years and years of coding and working in various companies, now I understand what a rookie is supposed to feel on the first day of the job and what is what is acceptable and what is unacceptable for them to, uh, to be able to handle um, as a newcomer to any organization or any code base. So a couple of things I want to wrap this video up with is, number one, fear of code actually exists. Don't fear it try to break it down and understand the different modules. Try to get a higher level picture first. What do I mean by higher level picture? Draw on a piece of paper that this module is this, this module is this, this is how they communicate, this is the, the web service that links them two together, this is a microservices application, whatever. I'm using some terminology not relevant to, to this video per, in particular. I'm just talking some technical terms. If you're not familiar, that's okay. But you know, you just kind of have to break things apart and get the high level education, ask the right questions. And what those questions are is really, hey, could you tell me what this application does? They should be able to answer that question in your new company that you join. Number two, you start asking, okay, what is this module responsible for? Or before you ask that, you can ask the, the person, hey, what module are you responsible for? And they'll tell you that. And you ask them, what does this module do? And they'll give you that answer and you write that down. Then you ask another team member, hey, what module are you working on? What module does that do? Well, I mean, what, what does that module do? And so, you know, you, you collect all this information in a high level way. And then you try to put the pieces together yourself first. And once you uh, are able to stumble upon some idea of how this thing works, Go back to some of them and try to explain to them what you think, how, how, how you were able to process this, and then you're hope, hopefully expecting them to correct you and to uh, uh, you know fix any, any misunderstandings that you may have about this application. They should be able to educate you on a high level how this module works with this one, with this one, and this you know. So that's how you break an application apart. You don't want to fear the code. You want to go back uh, you know, at a high level, a thousand foot view of this architecture and understand what's going on in any new company that's the approach that you should be using on your first day of the job really and if you use that approach rather than going to class going to a particular class in the code and just reading the code that's obviously a terrible way of of, of trying to grasp what's going on you kind of have to go um, and and try to understand the bigger picture first with that being said i'm going to wrap up this video make sure to like this video, click the like button, it really helps, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. Thanks for watching.